Hundreds of Native Americans settled here along the water, caring for the vast wetlands and marshes. When immigrants settled here, they knew very little about the uneven land, and had a lot to learn. However, by the year 1800, Anthony Wayne had fought the Native Americans for the land known as the Battle of Fallen Timbers, leaving vast graveyards in Toledo a ghost town. The city rapidly grew. Settlers had come for the same reason many people still do today, jobs and being a part of a city that is quickly growing. Soon, the swamp was paved over, leaving nothing but gravel, farmland, and opportunity. We weren't the only people who saw potential in Toledo. In the year 1835, before Michigan was a state, the militia wanted the land that leaked into Ohio. However, we were not going to give it up without a fight, stationing men in the heart of Perrysburg to stand our ground. Yet we gave in, letting them take the Upper Peninsula and settling in modern-day Toledo. Factories began to boom. Glass was a major industry bringing jobs to the homes of many people. Slowly, we began to grow. We traded with surrounding cities, persuading us to build the Erie Canal in 1845 with a trench leading to Columbus. This allowed us to travel freely, trade, create jobs, and help other cities' economies blossom. And because of this major boom, it drew attention to Toledo. It didn't take long for our small population to reach 1,322. Boats and ships flooded our ports. We became an industry for furniture, producers, lumber, breweries, carriage makers, glass manufacturers, and more. The canal allowed us to open many factory jobs, drawing immigrants with easy accessibility. By the year of 1880, Toledo was one of the largest cities in Ohio, adding a significant amount to the economy. Soon we became a boomtown. We built railroads throughout the city, linking us together with others from near and far. Trade became more easily accessible, adding more trains, leading to the biggest form of transportation we have seen yet. Soon, the Erie Canal was no longer needed by the surplus of trains, causing to fill it soon after it was built. The city was booming, beaming with successes and businesses, with strong people leading and living within it. Mayor Samuel M. Jones began opening up free kindergartens, libraries, school, and city workers in hopes to reform the government. This attracted many migrants from around the country, adding to the population, and in doing so, we opened the door for the thriving city we know today as Toledo.